The outbreak and concerns over the spread of Ebola continue to make headlines, but there are still a lot of questions out there. And to help answer some of them, we've asked Professor Tony Goldberg from the UW Vet School to join us. And I think some people may ask him, what, you have a veterinarian to talk about Ebola? But there's a reason for that, right, Tony? Welcome, by the way. Well, thank you very much. No, it's great to be here. Yeah, um, why would you have a vet? Well. Ebola is most likely an example of what we call a zoonotic disease. So there are diseases in the world that normally reside in animals and get into people at, at some times. And uh, diseases like West Nile virus, for example, or the flu. So Ebola appears to be one of those diseases. Well, our, our best guess, although we're not sure, is that it normally infects fruit bats and through methods we don't know, gets into people every now and then. Okay. Hmm. Why is this so alarming to people? I mean, we were just talking before the break and we said, you know, more people die from the flu every year, but this is different because it's more, more scary, I guess. Well, partially, yeah, it's, it's a terrifying disease. So um, in addition to being a, a veterinarian, I'm an epidemiologist, and we talk about case fatality rates. You know, how likely are you to die if you get a disease? And the case fatality rate for Ebola is really high, you know, upwards of 50%. So as diseases go, it's really scary. And it's got this, this uh, unique set of properties that make it even more scary. So a lot of diseases, when they jump from animals into people, don't go anywhere. They just, people are dead-end hosts. That's the case, for example, with, with West Nile virus. But for Ebola, it has this unfortunate property that it can infect chains of people, and it can pro propagate as an epidemic. So that's, uh, that's really scary. And this, this has been around before. I mean, Ebola is nothing new. No, that's right. Uh, it's been around before. We've known about this disease. And uh, in fact, this strain of Ebola is not very different from strains that have emerged in Africa before. So what's different about this outbreak, I think, is that it's happened in a place where it's been very difficult to contain. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of containment then, you, we know that it's not airborne, right? Ebola but, is not airborne, yeah. So then how is it spread? It's through bodily fluids? or And then what kind of contact do you have to have with body, bodily fluids to, to get it? So yeah, Ebola can't be spread through the air, thank goodness. Okay. But it can be spread by uh, direct contact with an infected person who's actively shedding the virus. So you'd have to touch that person or maybe their bodily fluids, if they've uh, made a bed sheet dirty or something and you wash it without knowing, you could be infected. And that's really troublesome because in the early stages of the infection, people don't show a lot of symptoms. In fact, their symptoms may be not that similar, not that dissimilar from uh, the common cold or gastrointestinal upset that you might get, and yet they have Ebola and they're transmitting it. So uh, it, it's scary because you can potentially be infected before you realize that you're even near a sick person. It is scary. Yeah. On a scale of one to 10, how scary is it for you? On a scale, a scale of one to 10, I, I'm at a five right now, but okay. that could go up or down within the next couple of weeks. Because we have these cases of people in the United States who've been infected, and we're sort of all in the public health community waiting with bated breath to see if they have infected people after coming here. If that's happened, we're dealing with a different situation. If it hasn't, I think we're in a good position to contain the epidemic. Let's hope so. Yeah. Tony, thanks for being with us today. Great information. Thank You're welcome. You. Well, coming up, looking for ways to fill your weekend. Michael Bruno has his picks to share when Live at Five continues. And Friday means Prep Media will go live to our Game of the Week with Sports Director Jay Wilson. Monday at 10, honoring the ultimate sacrifice. Thought he deserved a little more respect than that, just to be put on a plain old cart. A Wisconsin man's tribute to America's fallen soldiers. Experience. Well, fall is definitely in the air. And our favorite fall guy, Michael Bruno, is here with this weekend's Bruno's Best. <laughs> Hello, Mark. Continence free aluminum frame, available with brass or nickel hardware and keyed lock. Just $199. Add quality with Chamberlain garage door openers. This half horsepower chain drive includes two three buttons.